Are you mixing with your eyes? Maybe you think you're not, but you actually do. What you see is what you hear. Let me show that to you. Hello everyone, welcome back to Mixbus TV. Hope you're having a great day. First of all, if you like the channel, please hit the subscribe button, the bell icon. Check out the info box down below for all my mixing courses and a bunch of useful links. Comments and shares are always appreciated. Let's get to the video. Today we mix in front of screens. In the analog era, we used to mix in front of consoles without seeing waveforms or spectrum analyzers on every track. Was that better? It depends because spectrum analyzers and meters are incredibly useful tools if you know how to use them, if you don't rely on them too much. Why? Because science tells us that what we see is what we hear. It's called the McGurk effect, and I'm gonna show you in a second that our brains trust our vision over our hearing. As human beings, we don't experience our senses individually. Rather, our brains meshes with our vision and hearing to create our conscious experience of the world. What you see can influence what you hear, and likewise, hearing can influence our vision. Although speech is perceived through ears, what we can see can change what we hear. In the following clip, a man produces the same syllable over and over. If you watch his mouth, you will hear the syllable fa. But if you look away, you will hear ba. Although your ears hear ba, your eyes see fa. And even in speech, your brain trusts vision over hearing. This phenomenon is, as I said before, called the McGurk effect. So try this for a second in the next clip. And remember, the sound doesn't change. If you close your eyes, you will hear ba. But if you open your eyes again, you will hear fa again. Let's try it. Ba, ba, ba. Ba, 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 ba. Crazy, huh? And even crazier is the fact that even if you are aware of the McGurk effect, doesn't matter how much you know about the effect, it still happens. Nothing changes. Your brain trusts vision over hearing. So you literally have no control over this. So no mixing skills, no experience will fix this because this is just how our brain works, is our senses taking over. Now try this. Look at the left side of the screen and then at the right side of the screen. Ba, 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 ba. So this should be pretty eye-opening, right? You hear what you see. Our sight influences what we believe we are hearing. If we close our eyes, we actually hear sounds as they are. And by the way, you get this stuff only here on Mixbus TV. This is kind of the difference between someone who actually studies science behind sounds and music and how our brain perceives and interprets sounds, then apply that to his mixes, and others who just swing it and regurgitate information. There, I had to take this off of my chest. Now they can regurgitate this video as well. But so what all this means, that you shouldn't use analyzers? Absolutely not. Like I said before, analyzers are very useful tools, but like with everything else, it's a matter of how you use them, and in this case, how much you use them. Personally, at this point in my career, I use analyzer very little, mostly to quickly spot annoying frequencies when notching, and very briefly, like literally a few seconds, two or three times in a mix to just take a look and assess the overall curve of my mix, especially if I've been mixing for a long time. A few other times, I use them to compare my mix uh, again briefly to either an old mix of mine or reference tracks that's another way to use them just keep in mind that even the comparison is always a general and broad reference why because every mix is different every song is different doesn't matter how similar in genre and instruments they are you cannot cut and paste things from a mix to another and you might rely on analyzers and visual representation of waveforms too much because maybe your room is not treated uh, maybe because you're not confident in your skills yet and maybe because you're still learning so it's good to use analyzer for that purpose but when you do it just keep in mind that it's easier to use your eyes instead of your ears the problem with that is it won't make your mix better and if you caught yourself staring at a bass track or a kick waveform vocal snare or the spectrum analyzer 
ask yourself why. Why do you want to see a reading of your bass or kick track or your waveform in a certain way? Where if you're an experienced mix engineer, it's because you've mixed so many tracks and so many songs by now that you know ballpark how that track should look but if you're not it's because the ridiculous amount of misinformation and idiotic posts about mixing every wannabe mix engineer and guru out there keep posting every day instruments frequency charts one line mixing rule moronic level guides for instrument on instagram well keep following these idiots and your mixes will never get better i'm an actual professional mix engineer I try to present you scientific research when I do a video like that, you decide who to trust. But you will be happy to know that I will actually assess the problem of all the idiotic double tap me on heart mixing, mastering, producing posts with examples in another video and you know it's gonna be good. Use analyzer, just don't try to use them as a shortcut. It takes time to learn how to mix, that's it. Next time you use an analyzer, do the same experiment we did in this video. Look, listen, then close your eyes, listen again. That's how you learn. I hope this video was useful. I hope you liked it. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like, leave a comment down below. Let me know if this video was useful. Check the info box for all my mixing courses. A new one is coming up soon. A bunch of useful links in there as well. Follow Mixbus TV on Instagram and Facebook. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time.